and welcome back campers happy new year it's uh, january 2022 back with you after over a year and uh, what a year it's been you join me on hookney tour in the uh, middle of nowhere really um i'm here today with dean he's over there dean from Life on the Rocks, and the last time we went out was with Dean, was October 2020, so it's been a while, but we're locked down, down and everything else, that's uh, come to bear, but uh, I thought enough was enough, and let's get out and have a camp, so unfortunately, a week after Christmas, I slipped over on the deck and outside the ice. I twinged my knee again, so um, this isn't gonna be a long walk, but really it was just, just to get out, blow the cobwebs off, and uh, just try and get to a bit of normality, really. Um, COVID, what a year. What a couple of years, isn't it, really? Um, it's been a nightmare, but there you are. There you are. So, we're going to have a bit of a walk around and look around here. Um, there's a few people milling about, taking pictures and enjoying, enjoying what is a nice crisp afternoon here in January the 15th. Um, and the plan is, is to go down and have a look at Grimm's Pound, have a walk around the um, Bronze Age site and see what we can see. There's some, you can actually see the buildings down there. And um, well, when we get down there, I'll bring you back and we can have a look around. But uh, the view up here is, it's incredible, lovely view, quite high up. Got uh, post bridges down this valley. Right. Let's have a good look around and I'll bring you back in a bit. So we just left Hookney Tour. We're just taking a rather bumpy path, you might say, down to Grimm's Pound itself. And what is quite striking, straight off the bat, is the lay of the land, really. You know, if you would have thought if somebody was going to build what is a village, um, and go to the efforts that they have done, they probably wouldn't have picked somewhere like this, but there's obviously a reason why they have. <laughs> but it's right in a massive, huge dip. The, the, the changes in ground level between where I am and where Grimm's Pound is and the top of the next hill is, is huge. Absolutely massive. And the stonework that you'll see in a minute from the walls, just the walls alone, it must have taken years, years and years to build. And apparently it's not a defensive wall. Um, it's not a, a defensive place because of where it's built. If it was a defense, it would have been on top of the hill, but uh, this is more of where families probably lived, worked, you know, bred their livestock and the walls are actually to keep the livestock in and probably the predators out. So um, back in those days, they probably still had wolves uh, running around looking for an easy meal. But um, yeah, it's, uh, there's, there's 
green pony and this hill here is I don't know if you can see there's people there but quite a formidable hill and to get all those stones rocks and boulders probably down from the the riverbed in the valley down there there's some feat of engineering with horses and carts and cattle I would have thought but um, yeah, when we get a bit closer, we'll have a, a closer look. But uh, even through here, this is this looks man-made. All laid, granite sets all kind of laid on the edge. I don't know this how old this is, but somebody's gone to the effort to try and make a nice pathway up to the tour. So this, this would be another reason why perhaps this site is where it is. You know, you've got a water source here um, running down, right down through the site or just off to the site, side of the site. But uh, we're almost there now. We didn't fall in the river crossing over, which is always good. And uh, Dean, bless him, did go back and got the camera for me. A lovely boy. Don't tell him I said that though. And within about 20 yards is another water source. So they had two. Two water sources. And it looks to me like the water source is actually coming through the perimeter wall, which is there, and it goes right up around. So the river, this river, is actually inside the property, as it were, inside the pound. So you can see, obviously th this stone has tumbled down over the years, but it would have been quite an impressive, impressive wall there. Keep the stock in, the sheep and the cows. And the actual entrance to the pound is the top end, so it's the higher side. There must be a reason for it, but we'll walk around the wall, run the perimeter, and we'll actually come in the gateway. Um, but what a fascinating place. Absolutely fascinating. I've wanted to come here for ages. You read books and magazine articles and all those sort of things and you think plants a seed in your head let's go and have a look at that and I thought well I haven't been out for months and months and months so let's go and do something I've wanted to do for a long time and we're actually here doing it lovely job or should I say, proper job. So we've come round now and we've just found another entrance or exit. 
you see Dean walking through there. There are a few people around. I think they're probably groups, perhaps on a, an official tour of some sort. But um, we're gonna have a look inside. So we're just going through the bottom entrance. There's the top entrance there. You can just see some people stood next to it by the wall there. There's the tour we were at just now. We've walked down through and around and in. Um, if you're thinking of coming and you're not sure where to park, well, just down here is a road and there is a little lay-by and enough for four cars there, four cars a bit further over that way. And the other side of here is Warren House Inn and there's a fair bit of parking. In actual fact, Warren House Inn is, I think, is over there. Look, you can just see it just over there. That does look quite far away. But if you're out for a nice walk, you will certainly get a nice walk. So there's the, the other entrance. And probably the best preserved um, dwellings is this one. And according to archaeologists who did a survey, this was owned by a certain Barney Rubble. <laughs> The Flintstones, we all have the Flintstones, don't we? Right, so this is the doorway in. A bit precarious. And then, so I suppose this would bring in like a little porch area. And then we're through into the main dwelling. It's not very big. And according to a little bit of research I did this morning, would have probably been the top of the stone walls as we see them and the rest would have been probably a wooden top structure with with grasses mosses thatch and probably mud to keep off the rain um, you know, some of these have probably fallen out from there so you can't actually make out if there was a fireplace or anything, but I'm sure, fairly certain they would have had a fire in here. And there's a little porch area. So the actual main entrance isn't actually open to the elements, which is a clever, clever thing. And southwest wind would have taken the brunt of the porch area this way. So, yeah, it's very nice. Really well preserved, that. Very interesting. There's another one there. Not so well preserved. But considering the age of this place, which is late bronze, about 1450 to 700 BC, they reckon. In all, there's 24 houses in here. 24. Um, and there's further dwellings outside as well. Outside of the main perimeter wall. So, uh, would have been a fairly large community. It's uh, 450 metres above sea level. And obviously, Everybody then were hunter-gatherers. Um, so hence, livestock. Um, lots of hunting. Because, you know, this place would have been heaving with deer. And plenty to eat. And probably a lot more trees than there are now. Um, So there you go, there's the hut, hut circles. Apparently the, it was excavated in the 19th century, 
by the newly formed then Dartmoor Exploration Committee and they actually excavated 16 of the houses and found numerous structures and artefacts. So there you go. What a brilliant place. We're gonna have a bit more of a look around before we go up there. And uh, my poor old knee is throbbing just at the thought of going up there, but we're gonna go up there nevertheless and see what we can find. So we're now looking for a little place to camp. We've got a few hours of daylight left, although uh, I think it gets darker around about five o'clock at the minute, isn't it? I reckon so. Yeah. So we've got a few hours left yet, but it's lovely to be out. Great to be out. Here's that other water, this other uh, gateway. So we look at the gateway on the way out. Right, let's have a look through this. Through the, let's go through the tunnel, through the gate. Oh. I was just thinking it'd be cool if that was like a time tunnel, wouldn't it? <laughs> go back in time, which is what you're really doing, really. Going back in time and seeing how people lived. This is what we could do with like uh, a cable car or something. <laughs> right, let's get up there. <laughs> you have to excuse the noises, that's his bag. <laughs> so we've got to the top where the tour is, uh, which is just over there. I think it's Hamble Down Tour. Um, hoping to find a pitch. But uh, everything's covered in old heather, which is about two or three feet thick. So we're just wandering around up here now, looking for a little grassy spot. Um, just found one that might be all right. What's this here? This... Uh, What's the other side of the year then, anything? Well, you probably get one tent in there, one shelter. Oh, look, it's a letterbox there, look. So you people who like letterboxing, there's one up here. Uh, yeah, so, We'll have a bit of a wander around now, see if we can find somewhere to camp. That little spot I found just now, I think uh, this is going to suffice, I think. Um, just get the dual middle in there. Dean will get his hex peak in here. Yeah, get rid of all the, the cow poop. There's sheep droppings everywhere in mine. But, uh, and we've even got a little table and a, and a shelf. Um, there is a cracking little spot over there, but it's only big enough for one, for one uh, tent.
Right, we're all pitched up. There's the uh, MLD XL Dual Mid. Tonight, we've got the Snug Pack, Four Season Snug Pack, Chrysalis. There's the bedroom bag, there's the kitchen. Um, plenty of water, milk, a cider, and a can of rum. There's a sexy hexy peak. Very nice too. And you'll all know that I used to have one of these. Brilliant tents they are. Really, really good tents. You're happy with it, aren't you? Like. Yeah, it is. It's uh, <laughs> we're perched right on the top. The, the tours over there. Probably see some people on it. And the winds southwesterly. And, uh, we just seen the sun come down through the clouds. There, it was quite nice. But um, we found a little spot on the top here. And uh, yeah, it's nice. So we're all set up, ready to go. It is cold. Um, the wind factor has got something to do with that. If we didn't have any wind, it would, would be all right. But uh, yeah, I think I'll be retiring to my snug pack with my down booties on very shortly, I think. Get the coffee on, warm up the bones. Yes. Right, I'm going to go and get warm, I'll speak to you in a bit. Right, we'll try again. I've already said uh, goodnight, farewell and I'll be the same. But um, no audio, so I've... This is take two, or is it three or four, I can't remember. But uh, so I've had my tea, very nice too. It was uh, something to eat, um, curry, and a chocolate pudding for dessert. It was very nice. Dean's had pasta bolognese, he's over there. That's Dean, he's settled in. So I'm on my second cup of coffee. Just getting everything charged up now, ready for tomorrow. Or, or in case anything happens tonight, which incidentally we've just found out it's going to be pouring over rain. So we're just waiting for the rain to start. And depending on if what the ground's like when it starts raining, because it, it's supposed to start raining and not stop until the early hours of the morning. So we've got rain most of the night, I think, and it's quite heavy. So we could be floating off down the side of this hill on our uh, blow up beds, but we'll, we'll see what happens later. So if it does start to uh, get an interest in later, I'll bring you back so you can laugh at our expense, but um, hopefully not. Hopefully we'll see you all in the morning. Good night. Well, Good morning, campers. I don't normally get up this early, but uh, I thought, what the hell, let's get up and see if we can see a bit of a sunrise. It's uh, 7.53 on Sunday morning. And I think it might be quite a nice one when it decides to pop its head over the horizon. Had a quite a nice sleep. Uh, we're just camped over there. And you can barely see the tents from where we are, or from where I am here. Um, Dean's still snoring his head off, bless him. <laughs> Didn't sleep too bad. Sort of uh, 
in spats for about every three hours and then we'll wake up, move around a bit and then go back to sleep. So, yeah, yeah, good night's kit. Right, let's have a look, see what the sun's doing. So after the lovely sunrise, we get the rain, and we're uh, we're all packed up now. We picked everything up, and leave no trace, guys, on the moors. Um, we started. Well, we saw the rainbow, and then we thought, hmm. Then the dark cloud, and then in, over it came. So it was a good job we got our wet weather gear on quick, and we were just about packed away. Although I couldn't find my car key, so I had to empty my bag again, which isn't always fun. So I'll just have one more check around now for uh, anything uh, like uh, 10 pegs or anything, and then we're going to make our way back to the car. So, uh, me and Dean's all ready to go. I'll see you in a bit. Whew, well, back in the car now. Eh? Quick trip to Fox Tour Cafe in Princetown. Big shout out to them guys. Best breakfast on Dartmoor. Um, so I've just pulled over to do the outro of the video. And um, had a brilliant night. It was really good to catch up with Dean again after so long. Um, there was a few other campers out last night. Um, I hope you guys had a good time. I'm looking forward to watching your videos. Colonel Camps. Um, if you haven't seen his videos, go and pay him a visit. Um, Karen's gone wild. She was on Dartmoor last night somewhere. Having, having a great time by the look of her posts online. And um, yeah, it was a really good, enjoyable evening. Um, really nice to get out again. I could keep saying, but it, it really was. It was a breath of fresh air for me. So... The only thing that remains for me to do now is uh, say thank you to you guys for staying with the channel so long and I haven't, I haven't put any content out since I did the giveaways really and hopefully it won't be so long next time so um, perhaps next month or so I can get out and do another camp somewhere but um, I've really enjoyed this one so with that I'll uh, bid you all farewell and goodbye and I'll speak to you all soon don't forget Stay coolish, stay safe. Cheers, guys. Take care. Bye.